Archipelago is a game for two to five players and is set during the Age of Exploration, where the players will be explorers settling an archipelago. The game starts with everybody out at sea. Players are given three tiles and choose one to lay down. On this tile, they'll place their ship and disembark two citizens on the land. From this land, they'll harvest two resources, one to go to the domestic market and one to go to their personal supply. Each player continues this procedure until all of the players have placed a land and settled. That is turn zero of Archipelago. After turn zero, scoring conditions are handed out. There is a short game objective set, a medium game objective set, and a long game objective set, followed by some trends that are in every game. After turn zero, a trend card is drawn. On it will be something that scores points. In this case, having towns will score you points, depending on how many you have over other players. Each player will also receive a secret objective. The secret objective has two parts, what will end the game and what will score points. In this case, the game will end when a certain number of towns are built, and what will score points are exploration tokens. The game may also end if rebels overtake the citizens in the archipelago, causing everyone to lose. However, there is a secret traitor card that will cause the traitor player to win. A turn in Archipelago has six steps, disengagement, order of play, population effects, balance of the archipelago, actions, and evolution card purchase. In disengagement, any meeples used on the previous turn to harvest resources are reset, cards are untapped, and rebel citizens are stood back up. Then players bid for turn order. They take a certain amount of money, put it in a closed fist, and all blind bid. Whoever wins the bid will choose the order of play for all players. It is at this time that players can bribe the person who won the bid to go higher in turn order than the other players. Then players must deal with the balance of the archipelago. There will be two crises that the players will have to resolve, a domestic crisis and a foreign crisis. In a domestic crisis, the citizens are laid down and resources must be paid to stand them back up. For each resource cube paid, a certain amount of citizens will be stood back up. Citizens lying down are rebels and cannot be used during the action phase. After each player has had a chance to pay, if any citizens are still rebelling, the rebel marker goes up on the track. After the domestic crisis comes a foreign crisis, wherein resources must be paid to the foreign market. After these crises are resolved, the action phase begins, which is the main part of the turn. One by one, each player places action discs on the action wheel, performing the action on the section they place their disc on. Harvest lets you gather resources. A player places their citizens on the resources of the type they placed their action disc on, gather those resources, and put them in their personal supply. Taxation collects money from the citizens of the archipelago. For every citizenship and building, the player will collect a certain amount of money and put it in his personal supply. Exploration places new tiles on the archipelago. A player either picks the tile on top of the stack or right below it without looking. With certain restrictions, the tile is then placed as part of the archipelago. A citizen or a ship then moves to that newly placed tile. One of the resources found on the tile is given to the domestic market. The other goes to the player's supply. Reproduction creates new citizens. For every tile with two citizens, another citizen is placed. Citizens can also be recruited. The player pays a cost listed on the surplus worker board and hires that many surplus workers. Migration moves citizens and ships. Transaction allows one trade to the markets. Construction builds buildings. Once resources are paid, a building is placed on the board and a citizen is placed on that building to operate it. Buildings provide certain bonuses such as an additional trade action with the markets. After the action phase is over, evolution cards are bought. A player can either buy one evolution card and rotate another, drawing new cards as needed after the purchase. 
or if not wanting to buy a card, may rotate two cards instead. If any card is rotated in such a way that the red arrow points to the skull icon, that card is discarded. When a card draw reveals a red crisis, that crisis is resolved immediately instead of during the balance phase. Play continues in these steps until one of the endgame conditions held by one of the players is met. Players score their cards and whoever has the most points wins. Okay, this is Archipelago, and I just finished a two-player game with co-host uh, Virtuous Heretic, Mike. Okay. Um, Sunbro for life? Sunbro for life, yes. We shall keep that going. So, this is a game made by my favorite designer currently because he made two of my favorite games, therefore I kind of have to like him. And I like this game too. We just finished a game. We both won. I won a little bit more, but we both won. After and the last one, which you lost for both of us. Yeah, we, we lost the first one, and I probably caused the losing. Now, what happened here was... See, this game has hidden victory conditions, so you can't really say who's in the lead or behind, necessarily. But we were having the natives get gang up on us a lot closer. Last time we lost, we only lost in a very sudden turnabout. The top crisis right here can make you lose the game if you have none of that resource, pretty much. Uh, it's the red, if it's red. If it's red. Now, what's important to say is Mr. Brilliant... How do you say your name? Trenault? <laughs> Aubrey? I don't... No one knows. knows. No, but you lost the last one because the card before the sudden disaster also was fish. And then we drew the sudden disaster fish card. So we would have lost on the turn after, even though we saw it coming. Except for you didn't see it coming, and then it happened immediately. Yeah. I'm blaming him. We needed to pay blue cubes for fish, and we could have paid blue cubes from the fish market to win. What absurd Euro game this is. So we should talk about the action. Well, what we should talk about is the resolution of the game. Yeah. So um, what happened in the last turn, and it was only a fourth of a turn for both of us, yeah. was that I bought workers. Yep. Or actually, excuse me, I have bread workers. Bread workers using the really breed dead. worker action. Yeah, if you got two people in the same square, they get busy, and suddenly you have more people. Yeah. But what happened was, or what done happened was, during Aubrey's turn immediately after, he bought workers. Now, the one that ended the game in this case was what hidden condition of mine, and it's have more than 20 meeples, which are the little wooden figurines, on the board. And just in case it wasn't clear enough, Meeple. If I would have been paying attention, I would have noticed that he was most likely going to buy workers. And I should not have bought them because I did not want to end the game on that turn. As a result of that, we went into scoring, which I'm sure Trinant will enjoy to explain. Technically, it was Trinant, but... I said it right the first time, then you... Yeah, I know. Jump cut. The victory condition... In case it wasn't clear, I'm red and he's green and I'm first. <laughs> For a two-player game, each player has two scoring conditions. And there is going to be two trends that are open scoring conditions that everybody knows. So a total of six things that can score you points in the game. In this case, pineapple, which he had a pineapple. See that tiny green cube? And see Mike Exultation? Yep, yep. And then there's the Benefactor. That's the weirdest one. Basically, it means whoever helped out most in resolving these crises that can lose the game gets extra points for that. He got the most points for Pineapples, and I got zero because I had none. Sad day. <laughs> Even though he had um, squares with Pineapples right there. Yeah, I could have farmed them, but I was going to farm them the turn you ended the game. I don't know you ended the game. Let's not forget. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. And you can, okay, yeah. Oh, by the way, what's very important to say is we may or may not have been imbibing beverages of an alcoholic nature. May or may not have. Just maybe. Don't worry, we're both underage. Getting banned from YouTube one step at a time. Exactly. So my scoring conditions, I was actually, I, I was aiming for. I got exploration tokens and I built chapels, so I got scoring points for those. Mike didn't see them coming, so I uh, scored, out, outscored him, period, on those. However, I had no fucking iron 
controlled by anybody. Then again, neither did he. He, Even though he has the iron cubes... I was going to build the town at some point, maybe at the point that the game was still going. We also have the scoring condition of ports and cities. So I and controlled marketplaces. the marketplaces. Now, Mike would have scored outscored me on this game if the rules said that it was both the port and a marketplace you needed, but it turns out you only needed ports or marketplaces, and you just added them together. We both had those, so we both scored points, and I just out eat him just by a hair. Really, though, I want to say that it was kind of lucky that I won this turn as I did, because I didn't see it coming, and we just scored on what the current circumstances were, which were me winning. Now, admittedly, I think it goes to note that versatility is the best course of action if you don't know what's going on, right? But we were both... So, but if the scoring is any indication, we're both pretty yeah. well spread and stuff. I think the only thing that I would have done if I was Mike was seeing me explore like hell, maybe you would have explored on boot. Well, no, no, no. I explored. That's true. That wasn't the problem. It's that I spent the tokens. Yeah. I thought maybe exploration was a, a thing, not keeping the tokens. Ah. So, whoops. I kind of figured people might be one because he expanded from the very beginning. There's a lot of guessing that goes on with that, but it's also, yeah. there are a couple things in general that end up being good, having several different classes, and along with different kinds of resources, along with people in general. Even though I saw the end of the game coming quicker because I had the condition that was going to end it, there were enough, ran I mean, there's enough factors in this game to consider at once. The rebels were really close to overtaking the civilian population. Although this doesn't reflect the final win condition, which probably would have moved it to right about there. Yeah, really, we both won. That's what the game says. We both won. We actually won a lot more than we did the game beforehand. Is this Galaxy Trucker? Mm. Oh god, I zoomed in when I did that. When you did that face. <laughs> yeah, Galaxy Trucker has the same thing. Although it does it as more of a joke. Yeah. You, make, kind of you make me sad that you don't think Vladov Shavadal is your your favorite designer. But this guy made Earth Reborn. Uh, okay. Okay, come on. Okay. And Dungeon Twister. Both of which were my number one games until one preceded the other. I got nothing. You should do a jump cut there. So that's the resolution of the game. What are your thoughts on Archipelago? This is a... I want to say it's a board gamer's board game. The problem with it is it's an, Looks econo like it. it's an economic simulator with a large buy-in. There's another game we played called Mage Knight, and it reminds me very much of a JRPG, if anyone's familiar with that game term. Whereas this reminds me a lot of, a, you know, something like maybe, I don't want to say Civ, I want to say more of Empire Earth or Age, Age of Empires. I'd say Age of Empires without the violence. Yeah, you have to keep control of so many resources and keep control of so many factors. Your first time playing, I mean, it was miserable for me. But no, it was, it, it's a very brutal game to get into, but once you understand what you're doing, I mean, for God's sakes, there's a foreign market and a local market. I mean, there's a lot yeah, of... Yeah, come on. There's, there's two markets you can buy from. You can't and they, on YouTube? And they have... Yes, I can. It just won't get seen by as many people. <laughs> now, there's uh, the foreign market here, the blue one, and the domestic market, and both of them are dynamic. Like, the little columns actually matter in terms of like how much you can buy or sell and their price values. And that's, in a, in a f that's like a non, that's like a secondary tertiary element to this game. Just having that complication of its own. But it's a lot to buy in on the first time. As for this particular round, I felt a little more in control than I did the last game. Mm -hmm. The last one we did get wiped on, but I don't think I was gonna win. Mm. And this one I felt a little bit more in control, although it is still a learning experience for me. Okay. A lot of stuff going on. There is a lot of stuff going on. All right, well, I'll say my piece about Archipelago. What I, what I think about Archipelago is it is a Euro. I wish it was a more elegant Euro. I think it's very spread out. It's more like a, there's a term Euro in Ameritrash. This game feels like it has that Euro theme, you know, but it feels like a very American style of approach to design. What he means is that instead of just having wooden cubes, the wooden cubes mean things like colors and cattle and, and pineapple because who doesn't like pineapple? Technically they're exotic fruits. Shut the hell up! It has a lot more thematic elements than most Euro games do. 
in that they have like you know you can see the detail on these nice little box, little hexatiles and you know there's a lot of nice little cards that all have nice little portraits. That's a lot more detail than a lot of European games will do for their game. It's a weird blend, and it blends interestingly. It's a jambalaya. Yeah. <laughs> will it blend? Yeah. 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 Blend. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say Archipelago is a game you like? It's good. I like it. Okay. There are games that we don't agree on, and I don't think this is one of them. Um, I feel it's a very strong play. It is not an easy buy-in. Um, yeah. It's definitely like do the training scenario and then play the Play game. Catan, then maybe think about this game. So you just talk it from your horny torty perch over there, Euro bastard. Play a game like Catan or Carcassonne. Play something simple, play something medium. If you're really interested and really like that stuff, maybe look into this. This is on the deeper end of the pool. Yeah. I feel this is a it's a very solid game, but it, it is on the deeper end. I think you described it the best. The short version of this game ends before it starts. And we played the medium. That is important to say. The long game is quite long, but I feel that with the medium, you do get a hold of... The game gets going before it ends. Right. But you really need that shorter game before you can really put into this because it's a lot. I mean, you're doing a lot. There's a lot. I, I agree. Well, that wraps it up for Archipelago. We'll do a jump cut now. Oh, no! No! Beep! There we now go. Now jump cut! Okay. No, but jump cut. But...